Hey, this is Derek Jordan. Welcome to the World Fusion Show, where we bring you the leading innovators in world fusion music. Today, I'm delighted to be joined by Mike Block, who is a cellist, composer, and singer-songwriter. He is a member of Silk Road Ensemble and is just a wonderful, wonderful, expressive, and inspiring musician. Mike Block, thank you so much for joining us today on the World Fusion Show. Hello, Derek. Thanks so much for having me. It's certainly my pleasure. It's just great. And I know we're fitting this into our busy schedules as usual, but um, it's so great you could make the time. Happy, happy to talk. And it's it's great to see sort of all of the people that you've been talking to through your show. And I know some of my good friends were able to just hang out with you, Arun Ramamurthy and Trina Basu. And yeah, so I'm, I'm glad to finally have my chance. Yeah, you get your chance now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Very good. They were terrific. They were wonderful on the show. Yeah, they are. Um, and now, so I just wanted to start, as we often do, just talking a little bit about your background and how you got into music, you know, what your journey was. Did you have music in your family growing up? You know, what it was like for you? Yeah. So I grew up, I played cello. So that essentially means I grew up playing Western classical music. And my parents are actually Western classical music teachers, my siblings, they both play classical violin. So that was the world I come from, uh, you know, the orchestra string quartet world. Um, and it was sort of in high school, mostly in college and after college, where I just really felt like the, you know, the inspiration that I felt from so many different styles of music, I, you know, I wasn't feeling the way I wanted to feel um, playing just one kind of music. Um, and so I started branching out and, and, you know, learning different musical languages and, and, you know, composing, improvising, trying to figure out more about myself, really, while, you know, by learning th um, about music from around the world. Yeah. Well, you have, I mean, it's, and it's interesting because you really are quite eclectic in your interests in music. It's very similar to me. I'm also mm. very wide ranging in my, what I compose and what I present, of course, on the show. Um, mm -hmm. because we're Skyping with people all over the world now, and it's been fantastic. But you have a unique approach to the cello with your block strap. Yes. And that's the first thing people would see when they see you play. Talk a little bit about how you uh, got that together. Yeah, well, as a cellist, you know, traditionally it's played seated, uh, seated, seated. So, you know, if I'm sitting on stage, often in non-classical groups, I'm the only one, you know, that's sitting. So I'm often just looking up at everybody else who's having a great time. So, um, you know, I'm not the first cellist to, to try and stand with a strap. But uh, as far as I know, I, I am the, f the first to, to actually design something intentionally for the cello. So I, I made over a few years this strap, uh, unfortunately named after me, the block strap. But, uh, <laughs> but it, it allows me to stand and move while I play. And we've been selling um, a couple thousand of these actually to cellists all over the world over the past five years. So I'm hoping, you know, this is one of the elements that for me helps me engage um, with other musicians all the more. And so hopefully I won't be the last cellist you see using the strap and, and moving around. Well, you know. I think it's a great innovation and certainly frees you up to move around, even dance a little bit. And, you know, it's, I mean, you know, hey, it's, <laughs> uh, I, I'm sure cellists everywhere are going like, hey, I want to do that too. That's cool, you know? Yeah. So I think it's well, really terrific. What little dancing I can do, <laughs> I can definitely do while playing cello. Right, yeah. right. You throw a few steps around. That's cool. And which we're going to see in this first video, actually, um, if I can help it. And um, please introduce it for our audience. Sure. So actually, you know, for me as a, as a musician, it always felt somewhat arbitrary that I grew up playing Western classical music from Europe from, you know, 1700 to 1900. You know, like I grew up in Kansas, uh, you know, in the late 20th century. So for me, once I decided that I didn't have to just play one kind of music, you know, I wanted to learn all sorts of different styles. And a big, a big part of that journey for me was, you know, 
writing songs and just loving contemporary pop music even. And uh, so for me, writing my own songs, playing them with the cello has been always a part of my journey. So this is an original song, um, if I can help it. And you'll see the strap um, uh, in this video that was filmed uh, in by the Boston waterfront. But this is a song I, I recorded with uh, a band, you know, guitar, bass, drums, kind of a standard pop band, uh, rock band kind of set up and uh, the cello was used kind of in a, usually in my songs, the cello is is a very rhythmic driving force. But in, in this album, I saved the cello for overdubs actually. So the, the song was arranged as a group and then I kind of wrote my own string arrangements that I played uh, after the fact. And this is, if I can help it. All right. Well, let's go to the video right now. storm in my heart Left with the part of me Torn and twisted I'll never be the same But I'll never be at your mercy Oh no We are back with Mike Block, and that was just a great video. Really, a, truly a pop, a pop song, you know, right straight up pop music, and it's great. And you do it so well with the cello. And, of course, we get to see your, uh, you know, freedom, the freedom that the block strap provides for you in, in, in performing. Um, now, I wanted to ask you a little bit about, you know, you have very wide-ranging tastes in music and kind of what inspires you in music and what you're listening to. I think uh, the, my favorite thing to do professionally is to work with musicians uh, from different cultures, uh, different styles, and and finding myself in a situation where maybe a cello isn't expected. And I think the reason I like that 
is is because <laughs> then there's no wrong answers. Um, it's it's a more creative you know, elements. So, like, I have this project with an Indian tabla player, uh, my friend Sandeep Das, who I play with also in the Silk Road Ensemble. And we've recorded a full-length album and play concerts just tabla and cello, uh, which is not a thing. There's no music for cello and tabla. So, we have to create everything ourselves and really find, you know, discover the own, our own relationship between our instruments. And so, usually in cross-cultural work, what I find most satisfying is it's you know what ends up being created if it's good is it's not music for cello and tabla it's music for mike and sandeep because we have no choice but to put all of ourselves into the moment and to you know make something together based on all of all of our resources and instincts and and so um yeah, that's that's really what I enjoy, you know, kind of a situation where if you changed one person on the stage, the whole conversation would be different and, and really making it personal that way. That's so true. And of course, I am very much into improvisation myself. And frankly, my favorite instrument uh, on my violin to duet with is tabla. And awesome. I've had some great tabla players on the show, including someone you might know, Amit Kafkar. Do you know him? Okay, not personally. Oh my no. God. He is a 20 year student of Zakir Hussain. Oh, wonderful. Really wonderful player out of Boston. Um, anyway, um, it's uh, check out the show. It's He's, he's killing okay. it, he's killing it on the show. Anyway, you'd love it. So let's go to the video right now with you and Sandeep Das playing a piece you call Fight or Flight. Derek, we're back. 
with Mike Block. What a cool video. Great improvisation. Sandeep is a wonderful tabla player, and you guys clearly have a great connection in the music. I really love love hearing that. Now, um, you are running a program called the Mike Block String Camp and uh, for quite a while, and I wanted you to share kind of what you're doing with that. Sure. I mean... So as I, my personal journey of, you know, trying to learn different styles of music, I myself had a lot of transformative experiences at like camps and sort of short term intensive music experiences, right? So that's a big part of how I got introduced to a lot of, you know, fiddle styles and, you know, going to jazz camp. I've been to Arabic camps and Scottish camps. And I just love those opportunities to just immerse into you know, different musical environments and see, you know, see what can happen, right? And I found myself with the opportunity to direct my own camp, uh, maybe like 12 years ago now. So I've been running the Mike Block String Camp in Vero Beach, Florida, on the beach. So we get to go swimming after class. And, uh, you know, it kind of just for me is like this utopian uh, environment where it's kind of built around a lot of the things that I love, you know, so a lot of the musicians come from different styles and cultures uh, and your guests Arun Ramamurthy and Trina Basu have both been teaching for many years, as well as, you know, jazz players, Zach Brock, who plays uh, violin with Snarky Puppy, the multi Grammy award winning jazz group and, and then also, you know, Anywhere there's a fiddler, there can be a cellist, right? So, you know, string camps have a strong connection to the to the fiddle world, bluegrass, old time, and Celtic music. And so uh, there's a lot of those teachers as well. My wife, Hanukkah Castle, plays Scottish fiddle. And um, so for me, it's, it's a multi-style experience where string players of all kinds can learn from other styles. And we, you know, we divide people up into bands and you know, everybody gets to work creatively and collaboratively over the week. Yeah. Um, all levels, all ages, we've got different classes. So we've got, you know, we've got young kids that are taking their classes and then two doors down, we've got professionals who are also working more in depth with the faculty. So it's a really great experience. And, uh, you know, a big part of that, uh, you know, like I said, you know, one of the elements, bluegrass is such a big part of the fiddle world, uh, you know, for non-classical violinists. So I've, I've found a really kind of welcoming home as a cellist in the bluegrass community. And I love playing that music, even though it wasn't something I grew up listening to. And uh, so it's been a big part of, you know, many of my collaborations. And, and I think we have another video, which uh, is a um, I'm working with uh, two amazing musicians, uh, Zach Hickman, who is actually the bassist in my trio, Mike Block Trio. Uh, and then he and I worked with uh, an amazing uh, Appalachian fiddler and guitarist and banjo player, Bruce Malski, who I originally met at a fiddle camp years ago. And so uh, we put together a mashup of a bluegrass song, Walls of Time, and an old time tune that I learned from one of Bruce's recordings, Glory in the Meeting House. And uh, so this is actually a fun video where I'm kind of doing my own part to to bring the Hatfields and the McCoys together, to bring <laughs> bluegrass and old time together yeah. in a way uh, that kind of, um, yeah, it was special for me the way this this tune came out. It sounds great. Let's go to the video right now.
we are back with Mike Block, ex cellist extraordinaire, and wonderful fiddle, bluegrassy, old time thing going on there. Uh, very cool. Now, Mike, I wanted to ask you about your work with Silk Road Ensemble. And the next video we're going to see is sort of an offshoot of that. Um, but uh, tell us a little bit about that work you're doing. Yeah, one of the biggest influences on me has been getting to be a part of Silk Road Ensemble, not just because, you know, working with Yo-Yo Ma, the founder and artistic director for many years, um, but meeting musicians from across the world and getting to work with them. So that's it's been an incredible way for me to, to learn more and to meet new people. And I've really enjoyed, you know, working with some of those musicians in other projects. So the balaphone player from Mali, Bala Cuyete, he and I have a, a six-person uh, fusion band that we that we play together and tour. And uh, so I've learned a lot from him and his West African colleagues. And it, it inspired me to, to write original music that, you know, I could play with him and his band and, and kind of feel the energy that they bring to everything that they play. And uh, so that's, you know, it's part of the experience. You know, I, I work with Bala a lot at the Global Musician Workshop which is the educational program Silk Road uh, organizes. And I'm actually the director of that program and, and getting to work with Bala and other musicians from across the world. You know, those, those um, collaborations really are what keep me going, um, you know, creatively. And so this, this is a really cool performance with Bala and his band uh, playing an original tune of mine. And, and when I'm working with musicians from other cultures, I always want to learn how to say th something in their language. So Bala taught me how to say thank you in his Mandinka language. And those are the only lyrics of this song and it's called Iniche Kosube.
right. Hey, we're back with Mike Block. Mike, I just wanted to thank you so much for coming on the World Fusion Show. People should go to your website and check out all of your CTs and especially your new CTs that have come out. And um, anyway, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you, Derek. Great to talk with you. Great to talk with you too. Take care now. Hey, this is Derek Jordan. Thanks so much for joining us today on the World Fusion Show. It's been great to have you. And we have lots more great shows coming up with inspiring guests. Please follow us on Facebook, subscribe on our YouTube channel, and help us spread our message of diversity through inclusiveness to the world. Um, and I want to just say a big thank you to our sponsors, the McKenzie Family Charitable Trust, Dean's Beans, Nancy Feinberg, Jeff Green, and Ron Dan for your generous support. And as we always like to say on the show, think globally, listen locally, and support independent music. <laughs>